I'm considered to be an outsider artist. Outside of what? In a sense, I really love it because it actually keeps me free of that inside attitude. I'm, I'm not so much governed by the inside that I can't be free enough to work for the whole of humanity within Mother Universe. And I love that because I say thumbs up for Mother Universe. Children of the dark Children of the dark If you look at the things that I did when I was a little boy and I brought stuff home, I'm still doing the same thing. That Tonky, that's what they call me, Tonky. And I found out that the reason why they named me Tonky because they didn't know my name, I was taken and sold into a whiskey house for a pint of whiskey in a whole house. So it's called the Hunky Tonk. So they called me Tonky. What I've done, I brought this stuff out of the ditches, out of the alleys, out of the creeks and out of, out of the water, out of, out of flushing habits, out of, because uh, I got pretty well got stuff from around the world. So I've learned uh, so much more about what humans actually throw away and tear up. I love that piece because that piece goes all the way back, really through kingdoms and kingdoms and queendoms and queendoms of discussion. It was based on the Lord's Supper, but I wanted to take that to a much greater formation. The Bob Wise saying that there is going to be a struggle. What is the best formula of information that you all could come up with that is going to settle out all these problems, that can solve our issues, that can tell our children, okay, so you all want to be cameras. What I mean by cameras is the camcorder on their cell phone, everybody want to become a director. Now it's so much easier for somebody to get in trouble with digital data because you got little bitty children that is learning to use the cell phone. I call it Code Titty Mama. Computer Technology Management Code Titty Mama. C-T-M. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but talk will never hurt me. That's a lie. It's a big lie. Because now people, that's what they hurt you with. A word go all the way down the tracks of our emotions, all the way to kill us. One word can worry us to death. I was taken away from my mother when I was one and a half. 48, mama had had a baby, 49, she had a baby, 50, she had me. So, you know, she just had a house full. I think she was just one of mama's friends, and she probably had milk in her breast. So she asked mama could she take me and keep me overnight. And so she did not bring me back. So I ended up traveling around with her until I was four years old going from city to city by way of the fair and the carnival. So she came to Birmingham, came to Birmingham out by the Alabama State Fairground, and Miss McElroy and them had a whiskey house right around the corner. She came in and actually she told Miss McElroy to give her a pint of whiskey for me. So Miss McElroy ran her away from the house. Because they said I was so skinny and undernourished, and everything, and the lady hadn't been feeding me nothing but can and, and junk from the fairground. And so when Miss McElroy saw that, she just took me away from the woman. I think I left the McElroy's for the last time. At, I was getting ready to turn 12. Uh, Mr. McElroy, I didn't like him because Miss McElroy died when I was seven. So that's the reason, really, he had beaten me all day, whooped me, whooped me, whooped me. And I grabbed my wagon and ran across the street. That's when I got hit by the car. And I was drug up underneath the car for two and a half blocks and stayed unconscious for three and a half months. Mr. McElroy would only just let me go out and do my digging. He would never let me go play with nobody. 
I would have to go out the back door, get the fault, and get my Warren bucket and hit the ditch and go digging Warren. And I couldn't come back until I had a certain amount of worms in my bucket. It wasn't nothing wrong with a, a juke joint to me. Cause people be on work all day, they wanted to come and relax. And then get all of that thought and the next thing you know, they gone to sleep. Then they up, gone to work. But our days now, to me, is a little bit more stressful because they gotta deal with what? Technology. Everybody leave the same time, and then you got a tractor trailer, five or six different accidents on the highway between here and your job. You'll never get there on time. So cold titty mama gonna fire you. Computer technology management is gonna fire you. And you can't say nothing or do nothing. The computer is your manager now. Blood on the Rock Pile is a piece that I created because of having to spend a year on a whitewash rock pile. I was a product of the state. I belonged to the state of Alabama. So I had ran away from the Alabama Industrial School for Negro children. So they had the right to come and retrieve me when I, I made it all the way to a place called Tuskegee, Alabama a few miles up the road from Mount Meigs, and I broke into a place called the Formal Tractor Place because it was, had some crackers up on top of the refrigerator and some sardines, and I saw them, and I just took my, my, my elbow and busted the one out and went in the building, and then when I sat down and started eating, I got full and just fell asleep. So the man that owned it, the place came in, and he saw me in there, grabbed me in my collar and took his fish and knocked me out. So next thing I know, Mr. Holloway had got there and he was slapping me. Come on, darling, come to, come to, and asking me why did I run away. And before I can give him an answer why I ran away, he took his fish and knocked me out again. So that's two times in that day at, at, a, at the age of maybe 12. Got up that next morning brought up underneath both of my arms, drove down to the morning bench, tied down to a big tree, big cedar tree like that. And then my legs was tied on one end of the bench and the other one on the other end of the bench. And Mr. Holloway, he, he asked Mr. Glover, he asked me first, he said, who do you want? Do you want Mr. Reddy to make you sick or Mr. Glover to make you drunk? Mr. Reddy, I know how he will. He was shell shocked. He would beat you till you were almost dead. But Mr. Glover, he was kind of mild. He was old, and he's kind of getting older. So he would sit down on his bucket, draw his white oak stick out of tractor oil. That made the white oak like rubber. It didn't break that easy. So he started hitting me, and I was told by the time he got to 50 licks, my thighs had swolled up to the point that they split. Both of them just bust open. And then the back of my legs here, they swolled up right down the bottom of my legs in the calf and down in the muscle of your, your leg. They swolled up. And uh, then what he did after fifth the licks, he just took the stick and hit me in the back of the head and knocked me out. That was three knockouts in less than two days. For me to talk about it, it was just like unexplainable that somebody could take an order from somebody and they can do this to you. We were just children. But back then, it was like it wasn't nothing. So what I do with all of that energy, where I could stay above the thoughts and not have to sink so deep in them, I tried to keep thinking forward, way beyond the sewer pipes. Uh, because it was, it was survival. And I made it. I just really wanted to 
show my grandmama, my mama, that I'm, I'm worthy of a good thought. I can, I can think like this. All my life, uh, what all I do now, I had learned to endure pain and get beyond the matter of it. Get beyond the matter of it. Well, see, when they got through whipping me, I I couldn't walk. I They drug me on the rock pile and threw me down, and they had put white Navy clothes on me. My blood showed right through those clothes. So that actually showed the other boys and girls that I was a runaway. And I had to stay there day and night. I stayed on the rock pile for a year or more. And I had to heal there. So on every rock that I crawled around and got against, my blood was on it. My grandmama came and got me for my egg. She brought me home. I started going to the dump, to the city dump with her every morning at five something. And she would take the wrecks and things and tie sticks on them and wreck out the metal. Mama made stuff out of old cigarette packs. Cause she used to pick up all kind of cigarette packs. She would just take the scissors and cut, this, cut them up like I'd take and cut up. But she would make these like baskets out of them, weave it weave them in, Some, one side be aluminum, and the other one would be the colorful gold or silver. I think back in them days, it, art was not called art for African Americans. And most of the things that African Americans was done was put into the category of craft. It wasn't put into the category of art. I mean, we didn't get the benefits of, of of having something labeled right. And it, it was probably just controlled like that to keep us out of art, you see. I mean, nobody didn't say that my singing is an art. I sing, I, I have to make up my words. I have, to, I have to come up with thought about my words. I have to say, oh, the power that I see. Moving through the power line. Oh, the power that I see. Moving through the power line. Call the light to shine. Call the light to shine. It's like this little light of mine. Oh, deep inside me, I'm going to let it shine. I'll never, 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 never put my own light out. Never cut off the power of my brain. No, I won't do such a thing. This little light of, this little light of, this little light of mine. Hey, for every human, I'm gonna let it shine. You see what I'm talking about? I think in one of Bill's, uh, William Arnett, books called Souls Grown Deep, Out of the Vernacular, the first one, in there is me talking about an artist goes back to the ocean. I went backwards. I just started stepping backwards. I wanted to see how long I could maintain and keep my feet down on the ground. And I stepped back into the ocean, backwards going backwards until the water covered my head until I couldn't no longer hold my balance on the flow and then I started floating. That were a thing that I was thinking about because I wanted to, to say if you throw me off the slave ship and I was still alive and I could sink and maintain and, and be able to be like a fish could I go back home to Africa? Those are all kind of thoughts that I was going through when artists goes back to the ocean. But it's the same way if I went out in space right now. 
if uh, honoring Professor Hawking, Stephen Hawking, uh, I really love that this man would not give up. My little cuts and bruises that I go around complaining about is nothing like what he had to deal with in a wheelchair. And mostly everything is done by the breath that he blows into a computer. From the breath of a man, we can create a technology so advanced. I can't hang around in Tearville. I call it Tearville. I can't hang around in Tearville when it's so much for me to think about. And I love that. And I know I be using words like Tearville. Nobody else ain't used it. I, I come up with all kind of words and somebody say, where did that one come from? It, it, you know where that one came from. Came from Lonnie Harley. A lot of people say you sound like a minister. You sound like a saint. I say saint I ain't. I can't help you with a word, I ain't gonna say nothing. I just see so many things happening to humans, and a lot of it is their fault because they want to change their way of living. All they gotta do is be busy for themselves. Be as busy for yourself as a bee be busy for the beehive. My grandmama said I was her little king bee. Never really heard about a king bee. She just said I stayed busy all the time. I did. Got to remember, I started off as a little bitty baby digging worms. Now I'm still digging. Still digging. And hopefully one day somebody sent me some space material. And I hold it in my hand and I said, look, from the ditch in the creek and underneath and the worms running away from me, now I hold this space material in my hand. That's advancedness. That would make me happy. Thank y'all.